Let's go to uh, Jessica Whitley. And we're gonna talk to Jessica about a single mother, a single mother raising a future single mother. <laughs> a single mother raising a future single mother. Uh, her parents were d d divorced also due to f infidelity. She was raised by a single mother herself. She was a baby. Her mother decided to never marry again in order to keep herself and her children from the kind of hurt that she had to endure. Her mother worked multiple jobs while trying to pursue a degree in higher education for a better life for her children. Jessica would have a almost identical story three decades later, living the same kind of scenario that her mother lived with her. So Jessica, what would you define as two major attributes you gained from seeing your mother raise you and your brother as a single parent? I honor God. I honor you, Bishop. I honor you, elect lady. Happy Mother's Day to the best spiritual mother ever. <laughs> that is a good question. Two attributes that I learned from my mother was forgiveness and resilience. Um, I know I found out after her passing that she literally, even though she served God, she passed away with a broken heart, but I never knew that. Um, and so for her to, she just, she just kept on going. She never gave up. So resilience and forgiveness. She, she still would be very um, loving and endearing with my, um, my father's family. She did not hold that against them. She never, she never said anything negative about my father. She, she let us learn that on our own. So she, she never, I, I never knew how she felt until I read her diaries after she passed away. Oh my, wow. Oh my, wow. Okay, we're trying to hold Bishop down for a minute. <laughs> okay, <laughs> staying, staying for the children's sake like your mom did. Okay, you first you got married in your early 20s. You wanted, to chill, you wanted to shield your children from the same pain that you experienced and to, to stay out of a toxic marriage. But, in, but however, you endured a husband's drug addiction, his drug distri distribution, infidelity, and police house raids. Even though you tried to shield them, you ended up being in situations that you tried so hard not to be a part of your children's life. And you got married early in their 20s. So if a shield is one of the greatest weapons a mother can have, how do you feel you use it accurately or effectively to protect your children? Did you use that? How did you use that? My shield was the house of God. Mm. No matter what went, no matter what went on, we were going to be in the house of God, and we weren't going to be in the house of God just to be there. We loved, we served. I, there were red flags, so I knew that I had to endure with patience, and so I just knew that I had to give God everything. Mm. So my shield Amen. was serving. Oh, that's good. That's so good. And honestly, you know, Bishop and I, and she's family because. We had no idea Jessica went through what she was going through. When we came here to Las Vegas, I had no idea all the things she was going through with her children and a shelter. And she had one time in one little cramped hotel trying to make it, working four jobs at a time, trying to take care of her. You know what about her? She never complained one time. She never complained. Had a good spirit, her kids did, she brought them in. You know, had we known this, we would've jumped. We did, she did this, had a good spirit be uh, behind it. She never uh, murmured and said, you know, I didn't come in, look what God is doing, why ain't you? She had such a good spirit, working for, I never knew she was working that many jobs, but because she did it with a good spirit and a good attitude, she said my shield was coming to the house of God, getting that word and knowing that God would bless me. Oh, that's so good. That's. I just, uh, Doctor, I was listening to that. Uh, this this wonderful story of uh, endurement, 
and determination, I, uh, being determined that my home was not going to end up like the home that I came out of. Mm -hmm. But as she was speaking, and the Holy Spirit just put in my, in my spirit um, this, uh, these words. Dr. Owens, I wish there was a cemetery where they buried marriages that died before the people died. Mm. We could t I wish there was a place we could take young people to mm. and we could walk around and read the tombstones of marriages that started off dripping in love, but the marriage itself had to be buried in this special cemetery. Mm. There is something about these ladies' stories tonight uh, that I feel like young people really, really need to hear the types of things people go through That's right, right. and the kind of help that you have to have in order to go through. Mm -hmm. If you think the church is just some place where we assemble and sing and go home, listen, for some of us, it's life itself. <laughs> it's life itself. But I wish there was a cemetery we could just walk around and nothing's buried there but dead marriages. Not the people, but the marriage itself that died long before it should have. Mm. Amen. Wow. That is so beautiful. Of course, um, Jessica ended up uh, divorcing. Her, her children's father was incarcerated and she began to raise the children by herself. Uh, and she said there was a, an unexpected union. She said she dealt heavily. All right, they back there like, amen. All right, let me finish the program, you guys. <laughs> she dealt with uh, heavily, she said she dealt heavily with pain, anger, and bitterness over her failed marriage because that's something she never wanted. Wow. She said, but God came in and just took it all away. Unlike her mother, God would give her the desire. Her mother said, I will never marry again. But unlike uh, her mother, Jessica said God gave her the desire to marry again. And after being a single mother for over a decade, she would remarry again. She has now been married, and we remember that very, very vivid day when she did marry. And when your new husband came to us, all confident and suave Deacon uh, Whitley and just like he got this. I'm like, now hold on Deacon, I don't even, Deacon was so sure. I said, Deacon, but I, she ain't said yes yet. So we went on and gave him the opportunity, went in and asked her, because this became a blended family. Deacon Whitley, his wife is deceased and we love our Katrina Whitley, we love her with all of our heart. His wife was deceased, and uh, they, he had two boys. She had uh, two girls and a uh, son, and then she had a little half-stepper coming in, too, so she was a part. They are probably the best blended family I have ever seen in my life. I have never seen a more blessed, blended family as the Whitleys and the Webb. I haven't seen it, but they come in. And you know what, a wise woman, you have to give them credit for they accepted each other. Right. Deacon didn't say that's your kids. He didn't, she didn't say that's your kids. But whoever Deacon's kids were and whoever her kids were, they became one. They were our children, not your own. So amen, those are things that we have to be mindful to deal with. So it was unexpected, but when you do it God's way, God will make a way out of no way his way. 